Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast. Today, I'm going to be presenting to you the brand new and official successor to the Aston Martin DB9. This is a 124 scale Aston Martin DB11, and it's made by Motormax. <laughs> Now, the first thing I want to show you is how the model looks like in its box. And I have to say that usually Motormax is not really known for making particularly pretty looking boxes, but this one's an exception. The box is in the same color combination as the model, so that's always good to begin with. I like the black and white uh, on the box, and what's even more important and interesting is that they have pictures of the Aston Martin DB11 on different sides of the box, and on first glance it looks like as if it's pictures of the real car. But if you look closer, you will see that it's actually pictures of this 124 scale model. But it looks so realistic. I mean, that's just crazy. So all in all, I think that this box is done very nicely. Now let's get the model out of it. Now some of you might be wondering, what happened to the Aston Martin DB10? Well, it turns out it exists, but only as a one-off concept car, which was specially made for the 2015 James Bond Spectre movie. And I have to say that I had the pleasure of viewing both the new Aston Martin DB11, as well as the pretty rare Aston Martin DB10 movie car, in real life at an auto show. These are the pictures that I took of these two cars. They're not the best, of course, because back then I didn't have much of an idea what kind of cars I'm looking at, other than that they were Aston Martins. But still, um, I consider myself lucky. So the Aston Martin DB11 is the official successor to the Aston Martin DB9. Now, I think this is a relatively brand new model that Motormax released last year in several different colors. However, this color is called Stratos White, and... It's the first time that I ever saw this model in this color, and it was at my local brick-and-mortar store uh, called Drogerimarkt Müller, where I bought this and two other cars, one of which I have already reviewed in the past. And um, I think that this color combination looks awesome. Now, the other colors that this model is available in are anthracite, black, and orange metallic. This is a car that in real life costs over 200,000 euros. So let's see what the successor of the Aston Martin DB9 has to offer. So looking at the front of the car, we begin with an Aston Martin logo that is slightly three-dimensional on the hood. Could have used a little bit more detail, but it looks pretty good. And then, of course, we have the typical Aston Martin grill. The individual slats are painted in silver, although of course the grille is not perforated. But looking at the headlights, you can see that they have a fair bit of detail here, and most importantly there is no peg that sits dead center, so that's always good in my books. Down here you have a front splitter, I believe this is supposed to be carbon fiber on the real model. But of course, on this 124 scale model, uh, unfortunately Motormax decided not to implement carbon fiber. Now, the hood does not open on this model, but on the real car, it would open like this. Similar to the way the hood of the Jaguar F-Type, the SLR McLaren, or that of any Corvette would open. So while you sadly can't see the engine on this model, you can tell it is a V12, not just by the fender badge, but also by the fact that it has four vents on the hood instead of just two, like the V8 version does. This V12 DB11 is powered by a 5.2-liter twin-turbocharged V12 engine, making it the first turbocharged series production Aston Martin. The engine produces 600 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, and the DB11 accelerates from 0 to 100 in about 3.8 seconds and is capable of attaining a top speed of 322 kilometers per hour. 
Now, moving on to the side of the car, we get to see these aggressive spokes that the car's rims have. And they were originally painted in a darker silver metallic, but I decided to highlight them in a brighter silver color so that they stick out a little more. And I think they look pretty impressive. The car itself follows your typical sleek and smooth Aston Martin side profile. And this Aston Martin DB11 is a rear wheel drive car. Now, at the B pillar, we actually have air intakes here, so that while the car is driving, air is forced through here, and it then comes out of the spoiler, creating downforce, which is the effect of a real spoiler without there being the need for a real physical spoiler. Now there's a problem concerning the paintwork of this car. You can see that especially on the door handles, for example. You can see that the paint is too thick. And up here where the spoiler is supposed to be, you have the same problem. The spoiler is barely visible. Or over here, the fuel cap also does not look very pronounced. And the reason for that is there's two versions of this car with varying levels of paint thickness. Now, if you take the, or if you buy the version with the thin paint, one problem that you will get is that over here, somewhere over here, you're going to get like a crease, which is just not good at all. So to avoid that, I decided to buy the car with the thicker paint. But for that, I'll have to make do with um, not so good looking door handles and spoiler and um, fuel cap. But again, it depends on um, your personal preference. Keep in mind that this is a cheap 124 scale motor max, so there are going to be certain issues with the entire production run. And one of these issues is that there's two different types of this car in terms of paint thickness. But now moving on to the rims, let's take a closer look at them. So as I said earlier, I like the silver spokes. And behind, you will see a slotted brake disc and a black brake caliper as well. Although here again, I noticed something very interesting because I've seen a video of the metallic orange Aston Martin DB11 on YouTube and there the brake disc actually has the Aston Martin branding. Whereas here it is missing the branding for some reason. And I checked in the store for other um, Aston Martin DB11s in white and black and none of them had an Aston Martin branding over here on the brake caliper. So I don't know why that seems to be an issue with this particular production run, but there you go. And looking at the back of the car, um, you can see that it has these beautiful red tail lights. And I think especially in this color combination with the white, the red contrasts the white pretty well and are very visible. In the middle, we have another Aston Martin logo. This time it's just a two dimensional print. And down below, we have a British license plate. It's not going to stay that way for long, though, you know, with Brexit and all that. But um, returning to the car, um, this is a V12 Aston Martin Lagonda. The license plate kind of makes sense. The trunk, of course, does not open since this is just a 124 scale car. And we also have these silver tipped dual exhausts. And the center is painted black by Motormax. So this was not my doing. So that's good. Now, I have to admit that uh, when you buy this car, the cockpit will be entirely black. So what I basically did was I took some silver paint and I highlighted the details that Motormax has already provided inside this cockpit. But unfortunately, Motormax did not do it themselves, which means that all of the details will remain completely invisible unless you paint it yourself, but they're still there. So now that I've done that, you can see that the interior of this car is actually pretty well done for a 124 scale. You can see that we have air vents, as well as a center console full of buttons. And you can see that the car has a head-up display with the DB11 sticker on it. And regarding the interior, I have to also mention that Aston Martin partnered with Mercedes via the parent company Daimler and therefore shares engine and navigation components from Mercedes-Benz. And this car is equipped with an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. So here we are at the driver's side of the car, and you can see the steering wheel. 
it has a silver trim, or I should say I put the silver trim in place there, but um, I think it looks pretty good. However, compared to the orange metallic Aston Martin DB11 on YouTube, my white one is missing the Aston Martin branding on the steering wheel. I mean, what the heck? The digital instrument cluster is represented on this car with a sticker. Nothing special, but at least we do have something there. The floor pedals, on the other hand, are not painted. And here's a look at the seats. And now let's take a look at the bottom of the car. And, I mean, yeah, look at that. This is one of the worst looking underbodies of a car that I've ever seen in my entire collection because Motormax decided to put absolutely no details whatsoever. Uh, we do have the information, though. It says scale 124, Aston Martin DB11, used under license. And Motormax, what's that? Frodsham, Cheshire, UK, although it's made in China. Well, there you go, folks. That's pretty much it. So, the underbody of the car is a massive disappointment, but the rest of the car is actually pretty nice. So, I hope you guys like this review of the 124 scale Aston Martin DB11. By Motormax. And I'll see you in the next video. This is Imperial Diecast signing out.